In this lesson, we're taking a look at the song Drain You. This is part of my Nirvana series, which you can access via the link in the description. In the first lesson of the series, I went through Kurt Cobain's playing style and techniques, so well worth checking that video out alongside these song lessons. This is another track where we're tuned down to D standard, so each string is tuned down a tone, but like many others in the series, Nirvana would often play in the E flat live, so just a semitone down instead, so just make sure you're in the right tuning for the version that you want to play along with, and with that in mind, let's take a look. So we'll start with the verse part, which pretty much acts as the main riff of the whole song. It's the first thing you hear in the song and the first verse starts straight away. So this part is composed of four power chords, all using the two finger Kurt Cobain style, which I discussed in that first video in the series. We've got a B power chord rooted on the second fret of the A string, sliding up to a D sharp power chord rooted on the sixth fret of the same string down to a G sharp power chord rooted on the fourth fret of the low E string. I'm finishing with a C sharp power chord rooted on the fourth fret of the A string. So there are our four chords. We've got the B, D sharp, G sharp, and C sharp. And now we just need to put that rhythm in. And then we've got our riff. So what's going on there is on the B, we're gonna be strumming down, down, up. Then on the next down strum, we're gonna slide up to the D sharp. And then when we get there, we're gonna finish that off with the up, down, up. So those first two chords, we've got down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then moving on to the G sharp, we're gonna strum down, down, up, down. So down, down, up, down. Then we're gonna jump up a string to the C sharp and finish that off with the up, down, up, up, down, up. So the G sharp to the C sharp changes in a slightly different place in the bar from where the B and the D sharp change, but that's fine. It's totally something that you can get used to. Just gotta run it a few times and really listen to where the changes are in the track. So if we put it all together, we've got the B, so down, down, up, then slide up to the D sharp, down, up, down, up, down to the G sharp, down, down, up, down, then change to the C sharp with up, down, up on the end. And if I play it in kind of free flow, we've got down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. So hopefully that makes sense regarding where the changes happen. There is one little variation that you'll hear sometimes, particularly when they played it live, but sometimes you hear it on the record as well, which is that on the G sharp to the C sharp change, sometimes you will do the more conventional thing that you'd expect and strum down, down, up, and then change to the C sharp for down, up, down, up. So rather than, instead of that, you'll hear, just seems to happen sometimes, so don't be too strict with it, just go with whatever feels best and feel free to alternate like Kurt Cobain did. And for those who like to count the rhythms, what we've got here is one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and. So changing on the and most of the time when he moves to that C sharp. Now in terms of the structure of the song, at the very start of the song, at the first verse, we hear just the clean electric guitar. And then when the C sharp comes in on the second repetition of the phrase, that's when we hear the distortion come in. So if I play that through for you, we're gonna do one, uh, just clean run through of the progression. Then the second time, we're gonna play the G. And after we've done that down strum, you're gonna click in the distortion and then up, down, up with the distorted one. So just to put that together. So it's important to get those stylistic things right as well. Uh, and that gives you the verse riff. Taking a look at the chorus now, and we have a two chord lead into the chorus, which is gonna be an F sharp rooted on the second fret of the low E, and an E power chord just rooted off the open low E string. And we're gonna strum down, down, up on each of those. 
That's how we transition from the end of the verse into the start of the chorus. Then we're into this repeating chorus progression where we have a bar of C sharp power chord, followed by a bar of E power chord, again rooted off the open low E string. And we're gonna do one bar on each of those with just downstrummed eighths. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now in the first and second choruses, those two chords will repeat three times, but in the final chorus, it's a little bit extended, so you get five repetitions on the final chorus. But for uh, most of the choruses, just the two repetitions, so we're going C sharp to E, C sharp, to E, and then final time, C sharp, to E, then for the end of the chorus we're going to do another bar of down strummed eighths on the C sharp, then we've got three sustained chords to end it. So what we've got here is a B power chord, to an A, I'm using an open A power chord rooted off the open A string here but you could use uh, the 5th fret on the bottom string if you wanted to. I think Kurt Cobain uses the open A from the videos that I've seen. Uh, and then the final chord is the G sharp rooted on the 4th fret on the bottom string again. So that was B to A to G sharp. So if we put the whole chorus together, remember we're coming in with the F sharp and the E to start. Then we've got the C sharp and the E. Three times. Back to the C sharp, then sustain the B, the A, and the G sharp. Now at the end of the first chorus, you're going to go straight back into that verse riff, which we've already looked at. But after the second chorus, you're going to dive straight into the bridge, which we're going to take a look at now. So throughout the bridge, we've got this chuggy sound on a G sharp power chord. So I'm going to use the G sharp on the bottom string again. I've got it palm muted, and I'm just going to do a load of down strums. digging quite hard into the bottom strings there. That essentially acts as the backdrop to the entire bridge and then alongside that you get these kind of these kind of build-ups and bursts of sort of noise and energy on top before returning right back down to just the G-sharp chuggy sound. So really in the bridge you want to be aiming to vary your dynamics quite drastically, get used to building the volume up and then dropping it straight back down because that ebb and flow of energy really is what keeps it interesting. So for these bursts of noise, as I'm calling them, uh, quite a good way to achieve that is to start with the G-sharp power chord, uh, but I'm gonna leave the top two strings open. So we've got G-sharp power chord on the bottom three strings. I'm making sure that the third finger is muting the G string, because that one sounds a little bit odd, but I'm arching the first finger so that the B and uh, high E string remain open. So when I strum the chord, you get this kind of really dissonant and tense sound and it really helps to have a lot of either distortion or fuzz and also some modulation on this to kind of highlight the erratic sound of the chord. So if I stick a bit of chorus on, you'll see what I mean. Uh, and it tends to be two bars on the chug and then two bars on the chord. So you get this kind of sound. And then just return into the chug, chord. Chug. And for the majority of the bridge, it's just uh, alternating between those two sounds. I should point out that on the album recording, uh, you can hear that there's a few layers going on. So it's like the, uh, the G-sharp chug is recorded separately along with the bass. And then when he's playing the chord over the top, sometimes you'll hear him do the, the kind of crazy strums. But then at the end, he'll turn the distortion off and just let the chord ring out clean. So you can hear that sometimes, that might sound pretty cool if you're doing that with a bass player who's keeping the G sharp going or maybe with another guitar player. Uh, but if you play it on your own, you probably wanna alternate between strumming the chord and then strumming the, the, just the chug on the bottom. Uh, now towards the end of the bridge, you probably wanna focus more just on the G sharp uh, power chord on the bottom and start building that up just for the last few bars. Gradually reduce the uh, palm muting and then bring back the riff. Again, it's focusing on dynamics here, so just making sure that you've got a nice upwards curve uh, in the dynamics and create like a crescendo when that riff comes back in. And finally, there is a bit of a distinctive 
overdubbed chromatic melody, I suppose you could call it, on the, uh, on the album recording. So you might want to add this in to be super authentic. It sounds like this. So here what I'm doing is I'm on the B string, starting on the 4th fret, hammering down the 5th fret, back to the 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, and then on the demo at the start I just started strumming that string and then sliding up the neck. And then time it for the riff coming back in. That helps add to that crescendo effect. So you might want to throw that in if you're doing a bit of looping or something like that. Uh, and that gives you all the parts from there. You just have another verse and that extended chorus with the, uh, the five repetitions of the C sharp and the E rather than three. So you want to make sure you get that right to nail the song perfectly. Uh, but that gives you the whole tune. So enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this one. It's fairly simple, you've got another great power chord riff in the verse, really typical of Nirvana's style and pretty fun to play, so get yourself in the right tune and, and have a jam along either with the original album track or one of the live versions. You can check out the full Nirvana series via the link in the description. Be sure to subscribe for more content and I'd really appreciate you giving the video a like if you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next lesson.